Good morning, world. Hello, everyone, everywhere. Pastor Robert Thibodeau here. Welcome to another session of Prayer 2021 for today, which is April 13th. Praise the Lord. Scripture reading for today is from Colossians chapter 4, verse 4. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to pray to the Most High God. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being in the body of Christ. We thank you that through Christ Jesus and his sacrifice, we have become children of the Most High God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus of all things. And Father, we thank you for wisdom and understanding through your Holy Spirit that we can pray what needs to be prayed from heaven into the earth in the name of Jesus. Lord, that your will will be accomplished in this earth, just as it always is in heaven. To you we give honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Today we're going to continue our discussion of the interpretation of tongues. You know, yesterday we talked about the interpretation, interpretation of tongues in your private prayer life as compared to doing so publicly. And we reference 1 Corinthians 14, verse 27 and 28, which reads, If any man speaks in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most three, and that by course. Let one interpret. But if there is no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. As I said before, this scripture is talking about tongues and the interpretation of tongues in a public church service or in a group setting. In this scripture... The word interpreter is the one who has a gift of interpreting tongues. And as I covered yesterday, that does not mean anyone who has been doing so in their private prayer time. Now, I want to cover something that, again, may upset some of you again today. Glory to God. You know, here Paul infers in this scripture that there's a person with the gift of interpreting tongues is present during the public assembly where tongues will be spoken. That does not mean an interpreter is present in every single meeting. And where there is no interpreter present, then tongues should not be spoken publicly. Well, Brother Bob, how would someone know if there was an interpreter present? I'm so glad you asked. Praise God. This is the sensitive part that will have someone getting mad right here. Are you ready? Who is doing the inspiring to speak in an unknown tongue during the holy during the service the holy spirit right okay do you think the holy spirit knows who is and who is not present of course he knows all things do you think the holy spirit knows whether or not there is a qualified person with the gift of interpretation present in the meeting now the obvious answer is yes right am i right all right, the Holy Spirit is God, and he knows everything. Am I correct? So what Paul is saying here is that if a person is sensitive enough to flow with the Holy Spirit in the speaking of tongues publicly, well, then that person should also be sensitive enough to know when not to speak publicly, but only speak to themselves under their breath. Oh, amen. Don't shut me down when I'm preaching good. You know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm sure you've all been in those services where someone just blows up into the Holy Spirit, pauses, no one's interpreting, so then they give their own private interpretation. Though That is so unscriptural. If this person is someone who follows the Holy Spirit so perfectly that they wouldn't speak out publicly when there is no interpreter present, because the Holy Spirit would know there's no interpreter present and would not inspire them to speak publicly when there's no interpreter present. You see, if it were just up to the Holy Spirit, everyone will be qualified to speak in tongues publicly and also have the gift of interpretation publicly. But we are not perfect. We are human beings and not perfect, despite what you may think. That is why believers must learn how to yield to the promptings of the Holy Spirit in a more perfect way. That is why God has given us instructions in the Bible, in his word, regarding these special gifts. 
the very fact that Paul said specifically, if there is no interpreter present, also implies that an interpreter could always be present to interpret any, me any message given in tongues. One more word here that it's going to upset some of you. And I've been in services where someone will just start to speak out in tongues. They'll pause, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and then they give the interpretation themselves. And folks, let me tell you right now, that is not scriptural. I, I was in a church service, this was way back in the mid-1990s. And I was in a church service for several meetings. And this same person would speak out in every single service and give the interpretation themselves. Finally, I had to pull the pastor apart and, and, and just talk to him about this. And he agreed with me 100%. Well, I went back a few months later, and in the course of our conversation, I just asked him about that person. And he said when he talked to her about it, she became angry, got up and left, and never came back. You see, she was doing it for attention. She wanted to be considered the one who flows with the Holy Spirit the most out of everybody present. She may have thought she was operating according to a gift, but in actuality, it was the devil trying to disrupt the service. The very fact she became angry when the pastor confronted her privately and never came back again is proof that what I just said is right. It's proof that people who do this are under a demonic deception. What they are doing is not scriptural. Now again, the person speaking in tongues is not to give, not to give, not to give the interpretation publicly. And if the Holy Spirit is the one doing the inspiring, he will not have you give a vocal public session of speaking in tongues when he knows there is no qualified, gifted person present who will do the interpretation apart from you. Amen. And amen. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Glory to God. Now, I want to pray with you that you would have a sensitive spirit to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, especially as it concerns speaking in other tongues and interpreting tongues while in a public setting. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for leading us in this conversation this day through your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you that you desire everybody would speak in tongues and have the gift of interpretation of tongues. But we are all at different levels in our walk with the Lord. We're all at different levels in operating by faith. We're all at different levels of of knowing what gifts God has given to us. Father, I pray, anyone within the sound of my voice right now, first and foremost, they'd be born again in the name of Jesus. Second, they'd be filled with the Holy Spirit of the Most High God with the gift of speaking in tongues. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray each person would be sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And know that if they're speaking in tongues, let them do so privately to edify themselves in their own private prayer time. Then, as they become more experienced at speaking and interpreting what is said in tongues in their own private life, and have documented evidence of the fact that what they are saying is coming to pass, especially coming to prophecy, Lord, let them then seek the wisdom of two or three trusted advisors and ministers of the gospel. And Lord, slowly, on your timetable and not theirs, may they also become sensitive to when it is appropriate for them to either speak in tongues in a public setting or to give an interpretation of tongues that has been given in a public setting, as not to disrupt the services, but to edify the people present. And Father, we just thank you for that sensitivity in the Holy Spirit. To you, Father, we give all honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. 
Thank you for hanging in there with me today. Hallelujah. Now, do me a favor. Leave a comment down below. Go to iTunes. Leave a comment rating there. If you're starting a Christian podcast, oh, glory to God. We've been reworking this website, podcastforchrist.com, making it better. You need to go over there, podcastforchrist.com. If you have a Christian podcast, you're thinking of starting a podcast for your book, your music, your your business, your ministry, your church, go to podcastforchrist.com. There's a free resource right there, how to launch a Christian podcast, and it's free for the taking. Amen. All right, folks, till next time, this is Pastor Bob reminding you again from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 in the Living Bible to always keep on praying. Be blessed. We'll talk to you tomorrow.